Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be doing some planning for final year of my PhD which starts in just a couple of weeks. Ugh. Um, I really can't believe that I'm at this point now like where I'm heading into the final year and it'll just be counting down months and not counting down years at this point. It has been almost three full years since I started my PhD and we're getting to the very end of it now. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is doing some planning in terms of the key dates and what are the different projects that I'm going to be working on for the last couple of months of my research and then how I sort of plan on writing my thesis in terms of a timeline as well. And also putting in some key dates for holidays the key dates for other things that I have involvement with, including teaching hours, and then also with the business that I run, all of those key dates. So basically just putting together a kind of calendar for the next year. The two main pages that I use are a sort of year at a glance, which is taken from bullet journaling principles, where we see all the key dates for the upcoming year. I find this works a lot better than trying to just put everything in Google Calendar because I feel like there's no good way to get a sense of the year that's coming up or at least the next couple of months when you're using something like that. But I do typically then each month put all of those key dates into a monthly spread and sometimes into Google Calendar as well, depending on what kind of event it is. The other thing that I'm using then for research and PhD work specifically is a sort of timeline for the next year of when I'm going to be working on different projects and those sort of dates that I have coming up and that's part of my thesis template. So my PhD is in recommender systems or trying to build training recommendations automatically for marathon runners using the type of data that we get from our smartwatches from an app called Strava specifically and the main projects that I still need to work on in the next couple of months before I wrap up my research is to first just return to the raw data set and extract some additional features and just do some extra sort of feature explanation and feature exploration and understanding what training features we have that highly correlate to marathon performance and then building a new prediction model with different models than I used before just to try out some different methods and that's something that just really is required for my thesis otherwise I'll get loads of questions about why I'm just using this one method even though I think we will end up with that one method as the main method in the thesis and then bringing everything together into a full recommender system from start to finish and having some sort of user interface piece with some sort of user uh, evaluation I think will be really required to strengthen it and so it's about when is going to be the best time to work on those I guess two projects that I still have to work on so the features and prediction and then the the recommender system bringing it all together there's one extra small piece to do on returning to the training disruptions work which I really don't like that work but it's a small project. I don't think it's going to take much. I don't think it's going to be publishable. It'll just be something to add to the thesis really. So that's something that I'll probably just do at the end of all of this. So I need to decide when will be a good time to do each of those. Um, other than the thesis planning, I feel like a lot of what I'm doing in this video is the same sort of planning that I've been doing every year. And pretty much what I do is I look at upcoming conference deadlines at the same time as looking at projects that I want to do and trying to see when would it be a good time to work on different projects based on what conference deadlines are coming up. I am going to my first in-person conference in September and otherwise I haven't been to any in-person ones and I still have a lot of my travel budget to use which means I can do a good bit of conference traveling in the next year which I wouldn't really have anticipated doing in final year but I still have the option to so I probably might as well. So firstly, I'm just going to the year at a glance page on my Notion and adding in all of the key dates for the next year. So that might include any conferences that I might like to attend or submit to. So if I have a submission date and a date that the conference would be on, they all go in there. Any other relevant submission dates, so sometimes journals have specific issues and those would have specific dates. So I'm adding those in and then I'm also adding in 
any dates for the business that I run. So that will be the dates that we start back classes, dates that any of staff are away that I might need to make plans for, the dates that we have any breaks or any big events like performances or competitions or exams. All of those are going in there as well as any dates for the university work that I do. So any of the teaching and lecturing that I'm doing. So if there's weeks where we're starting back classes and if there's weeks where we have breaks from classes, all of those are going in. And lastly, any sort of personal dates. So any holidays that I have booked or any times that it might be good to go on a holiday, any family events, any birthdays, any thing like that, basically any friends' birthdays, anniversaries, all of that then goes in and that's sort of where I end up. And this just serves as a reminder. So typically I like to look at the next couple of months to see what might be coming up and that helps me plan around what I might want to do in these next couple of months or any extra to-dos that might be coming up. So in September, really early on, I have a presentation that I'm going to be doing and that's something that I want to try and get the slides done for in the next week. I then have a 21 day holiday. So I actually technically have a week in the middle that's a working week because I'm going to my first in-person conference. And you'll see that as I'm going through some of these dates, what I end up having is realizing that I have things to do associated with each of these. So as I'm going through this, I'm going to be adding tasks to my to-do list, which is in my mind sweep um, or my tasks and actions list. And sometimes these will be full projects. So for example, the conference is already a project that I have and I have a couple of to-dos to in accordance with that. So with this presentation, I need to make my presentation slides. So I'm adding that in. Um, I still need to book accommodation for the conference and for one of the places that I'm staying on my holiday. Then we are back to classes in my university from the 12th and I'll be missing the first two weeks. So I need to email lecturers about absence to make sure that if it's early on, maybe that doesn't matter or maybe I shouldn't be in that class or it's fine to get someone to cover, I don't know. And then over that holiday, I will have a presentation and actually two presentations. So I need to make presentation slides for both of those. So I have a lot of presentation slides to make in the next couple of weeks. Then I'm starting lecturing again later in the month. That's fine, I'll need to do some work for that. But honestly, I just don't know what to do with that yet because I'm waiting for some materials to come through. And then I start back work with the drama school on the 26th and I have already all of my to-dos sorted for that because I have a completely separate area where I'm tracking all of my business to-do list. Then coming into October, the first submission for a conference that we might go for is one called IUI or Intelligent User Interfaces. And I need to have a discussion with my supervisor about that to see if we will be targeting this. I think it would be a suitable one for us to go for and the full paper will be due October 14th. So that's exactly two months from now, which does give a good amount of time to work on that. And there's nothing really else until uh, December, January. So it is probably a good thing to try and go for. Um, so that sort of informs what I should be working on for this first period of the academic year. And if I switch over to my thesis plan, then I can look at what I had thought that I would be working on these last couple of months. And I'm just going to do a bit of rearranging based on that. So I was planning on doing feature engineering and the sort of marathon prediction work at this time, but I haven't been able to get back into my data really to generate new features. And so that is going to be pushed out until after the deadline for the IUI. So let me just make a bit of an adjustment here and we probably need a bit more time for these but for now I'll just leave those in like that Oops. and then what we're going to work on for IUI would be the full recommender system so that is going to go into this position and the user interface validation will also be part of that and let's maybe move that back Okay, perfect. Then you can see we have my holidays in there as well and that's pretty much it. I suppose I need to do this as well. So I might just pop that over here 
for whenever I do get into the data set that will come in handy and that can go around there. So let's just move these around to make them a bit more organized. Okay, so that sort of shows me what I will be working on for the next several months with regards to the research projects. So the marathon time prediction then will be my last probably big conference submission and there are a couple of submissions in January. So we have um, ICML and IJKAI, which are then gonna be on in July. I don't know for sure if I will be able to do those because they're quite advanced conferences but for the moment that's probably going to be where we plan on having that so that's just to keep in mind for later in the year but I don't really need to start working on anything for that just yet and then in terms of when I'm going to get extra holidays so I am going to take a week off at the end of October so after the next submission I typically try and take a bit of time off after each submission and the week of around Halloween will be a good time because I have time off from two of the other responsibilities that I have. Then in November, I just have my sister's hen party. So that's something that I need to do some work on to get everything booked for that. Nothing else really coming up in November. And then in December, we'll just have our final performances for the drama school. There's just finishing up of different classes. I usually meet my research studies panel around this time. And then I also have my sister's wedding, my birthday and Christmas. So those will be the sort of four months coming up of the research work that I still need to do. The final submission, as I said, would probably be in January. I don't know if I'd end up submitting things the couple of months that I'm working on my thesis. It's, it's not something that I'm planning on doing, but I don't really know for sure. In terms of then what happens after Christmas, so January, we would have a submission at some point in January but I will be starting to work on my thesis pretty much in January and I'm hoping to get it done in June as depending on the conference that we submit in January, it could be quite far away and I'll like, I'd like to take a couple of weeks off at that time. So I'm hoping that I would be finished and just able to enjoy that time, fingers crossed. In terms of the sort of order that I plan on writing my thesis, I think the first couple of chapters that I'll write will be all of the ones around getting my data set ready and then the two or three main chapters of the methodology work and the results for each of those different sub projects. I've talked about my thesis plan already a bit but I think those ones will be the ones that'll be easiest to work on because I will have already written those conference and journal papers to go with each of those. So it'll basically just be rewriting a lot of those and reframing, remodeling some things with some of the new data that I'll have. But I think those ones will be easiest to get done. And then I'm planning to go back and do a full literature review. So that'll be sometime in March, I'm guessing, where I can really just get all of that done close enough to the time that I'm going to be submitting so that I won't have to redo any of that. And then I'll go back and do an introduction, then discussions and conclusions, and then leaving some time for reviewing and revising and everything like that. So that is pretty much the plan. What else I'm going to be doing in that time? Um, I will still have some classes that I'm teaching for and I have the key dates in for that. And I have a lot of work with drama school still to be doing. And then because we've just submitted work for a conference this last week, if I get into that, that will be on in February in Washington, DC. And I'll probably add on a week of holidays then as well. Same thing if we got into IUI, that would be in Sydney at the end of March. So I'd add on some holidays there and spend a little bit more time there. Um, usually it's a good time to go away around Easter as well for like a nice weekend away somewhere. And then otherwise I will be taking a week early June. Um because it'll be a time where I don't have any work for the drama school or for any of the lecturing work. So it's just a good time to take time off. And then the next time will be at the end of July when I've hopefully submitted my thesis and when I um, will be going to potentially Asia or Cape Town. So it's a lot of maybes because the three conferences that I am hoping to submit to are all really well, the one I've already submitted to and the next two that I'm hoping to submit to are all really competitive and I don't feel super confident about that one. If I got into one of these conferences, that would probably be great, but I'm being really hopeful right now because these would be great holidays to have. 
and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get into all three. That is sort of it for how my next year is looking in terms of what research I'm going to be doing, what key dates I have coming up and when I'm planning on writing my thesis. So yeah, I hope that this video was helpful. Um, I do have another video coming soon about more the week to week organisation that I'm going to have for autumn term all around how I manage all of my commitments and what my sort of schedule is looking like for autumn term. Thanks for watching, thanks to all of my wonderful members. If you've gotten to this point in the video, maybe think about subscribing down below or giving this video a thumbs up because it really helps out my channel. And I will see you all in the next video.